option for veterans who are suffering from PTSD. Yeah, doctors say the main ingredient in ecstasy, along with psychotherapy, could help people work through some of that trauma. Dr. Mandir Mera from SSM Health, our medical expert, joins us now to talk more about this option. And I think the first thing, Dr. Mera, to make very clear is this is not doctors administering ecstasy to these veterans. <laughs> it is it is different than that. Can you clarify a little bit? Correct. It's definitely not a title that we hear every day. And it definitely is not meant to encourage veterans or anybody out there with any uh, psychological mm -hmm. issues, whether that's PTSD or anything else, to go out there and do ecstasy. That being said, the common ingredient or the main ingredient in ecstasy is this MDMA component. And without getting too scientific, about it, the PTSD can have a variety of symptoms. And as we know, we read about veterans committing suicide, having fear, having other kind of mm -hmm. depressed issues. It's a whole syndrome, really. And so many of the common therapies, Paxil, Zoloft, other antidepressants, work in about maybe one third of those veterans, but then you have two thirds that really don't have great therapy options. So here's a unique, still being studied FDA option where the MDMA would actually work on a part of the brain called the amygdala. And this may be our fear Center. So you think about uh, perhaps being attacked by a wolf, uh, functional MRI show, that part of your brain would suddenly fire or trigger something. So imagine kind of chronically having this feeling just, mm -hmm. you know, as a war veteran, having seen things, perhaps gone through uh, trauma yourself. So now multiple therapies with the MDMA, Plus, of course, the psychotherapy have shown some progress. A uh, number of veterans have said that they felt better than they ever felt, and perhaps there's some promise and some hope here. And uh, so, uh, to make it clear, too, I think a lot of people associate ecstasy with, you know, hallucinations and, and things like that. Yeah. What is this component, uh, the MDMA, and, and, and is it connected to that in any way? Some of them, but yeah. not necessarily the, um, you know, th that we think of the high components sure. of it. Yeah. Perhaps some of the euphoria, those kinds of things. But again, this has to be very FDA studied and we need larger studies. But yeah. what it is showing is that that amygdala, that fear component is decreased. And the hope, of course, is to make people more functional and decrease suicide rates. And be able to talk about this of a little course. bit more. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're talking also about another study about yeah. drinking that says middle-aged drinkers care more about their reputations then they care about the health risks. Right, and so this is so interesting. You know, if I asked all of our viewers out there today, what is it that you care about? Is it that Dr. Vera talks about liver cancer yeah. and other types of cancers, high blood pressure? Is that what's gonna stop you from drinking today? Or is it the fact that perhaps you care about your behavior today out at happy hour? And I would venture to say, if we support the study, that perhaps eight out of 10 or seven out of 10 adults in this age range would say they care more about their behavior rather than the health effects. So when they feel that they're acting um, in disproportion to their peers or their family members. That's what people actually care about, not necessarily what we doctors always preach about the health benefits of not drinking mm -hmm. or drinking in moderate amounts, uh, not the fact that it could lead to hypertension, cardiovascular disease, different types of cancers. So very interesting because you think, well, don't we make most of our decisions based off health benefits? Mm -hmm. Actually, we care more about what we and what society thinks of us. And so it was also interesting that it pointed out how much our friends and family drink also gauged what we thought was normal. So perhaps if you and your friends or family drink a lot and you're kind of surrounded by that, uh, you may not think that your a lot is really a lot. It's all kind of relative like we always say. So really gauging honestly with yourself, with your doctor, kind of talking, saying, well, what's normal? How much should I be drinking? Is a beer during the football game okay? Or per perhaps 10 is not. So uh, probably something we can all relate to on some level. Sure. But Behavior is important, but so is health. Very interesting study yeah. there. Well, thanks so much for waking up with us. Yeah, yeah. great always, to be here. Always good to see you. 616 right now, and as Salt